So um, this is a short one. This won't take too long, but you know, we love to hate this guy. We really do. We really do. And he may, I mean, he's asking for it. He's asking for it. Uh, he dressed so amazingly to make this video. It's very short um, and it's very wrong on a number of points. Um, so we're going to, we're going to have a little bit of fun with the great Jason on and his, uh, his critique of my defense of the Dutch farmers. Regulations on the rich and you say, no, could you please buy this fertilizer? Okay. Now you have to buy this fertilizer that has less of an issue with causing the destruction of the planet. And it's a little bit more expensive. They throw a fit because their profit margins won't be as big as they were. Uh, actually, Jason, the reason their profit margins are going to be not as good is because they're going to put out less produce. Right? That seems to be the issue. And there's some other issues, too. Um, okay, writing it down. But the issue is that their crop output is going to go down. I don't know if you've noticed Sri Lanka, but they... Sri Lanka, you know, they were forced by BlackRock, which is a investment firm in the United States and in Britain. They were forced by them to go organic in order to get their, their credit rating better, their green credit rating better. And so they went organic and the result was a much lower crop output. And it led to a whole big problem in the country. I don't know if you're aware of this. Um, so you know, these, these kind of environmental policies, in a lot of cases, they result in the amount of food that farmers grow decreasing. And that, yeah, that is definitely going to cut into their profit margins. You bet it will. It'll also reduce the amount of food that's on the market. And we're having a global food crisis right now, Jason. I don't know if you're aware of this, but, you know, malnutrition related deaths in Africa have significantly gone up since the pandemic. Uh, I don't know if you're aware of this, Jason, but because of the fight in Ukraine, you know, Russia's ability to export into Ukraine is being limited. Ukraine's crop output is going down. There's going to be a global food crisis. Now, you know, you and I, Jason, we live in the first world, so we're probably going to be OK. But in Africa, where there's already limited access to food, people are going to die because of this. So the last thing that any country on the world should be doing right now is trying to figure out how to reduce crop output. So the fact that these Dutch farmers are being having policies imposed on them that will reduce the amount of crops they're putting out and that they're taking farmland away from these farmers, right? They're reducing the amount of farmland overall. You know, I think that that's a little bit of a problem. And I know you just want us to hate them because they're rich. We're supposed to hate these farmers because they're rich. But I think the issue is they're going to produce less food. And that ain't good. That ain't good. But continue, Jason. So naturally, when you have the rich complaining about not making enough money, you have pant socks jumping on them, defending them. And then turning around saying, whoa, look, here's a workers thing. And once again, leftists are looking for a way to stand against it or oppose it. It's not about the class nature of those farmers, Jason. It's about the fact that their output is going to go down during a food crisis, my friend. When there is a global problem of food shortages and people are going to die of malnutrition, generally you want there to be more food, not less. I know we're supposed to hate these farmers because they're rich. Someone else told me that some of them did business in apartheid South Africa or something like that. Again. The issue is people around the world are going to starve that the USA has created a global food crisis with its attacks on Russia and with BlackRock pushing these green policies that drive food production down. And now they're forcing these farmers to give up a lot of their land. They're forcing these farmers to use uh, fertilizer that is less effective. It's not going to grow as many crops and they're going to have less food to put out there. And we're in the middle of a global food crisis. That's the issue, Jason. That's not what's happening. When the rich are throwing a fit because they don't want to have to give a damn about the planet, that's not Malthusianism. You know that. Yeah, it's the ultra rich that are pushing these policies, Jason. 
you do know that these policies are also being implemented by rich people, right? That yes, some of these farmers are rich. However, Bill Gates is also rich. BlackRock is also rich. The owners of the World Business Forum, the World Economic Forum, they're also rich. Most of the people pushing for degrowth are very, very rich. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yes, these farmers are rich, but the people trying to restrict their crop output are also very, very rich and probably a lot richer. So continue, Jason. This word that you use to describe everything it is that you don't like. This is not degrowth. This is... It's not degrowth. So these farmers are who grow food are having policies imposed on them that will result in them growing less food. The amount of food being produced will go down. This is not degrowth. What is degrowth if it's not the amount of growth going down? It's not degrowth. Oh, boy. Literally trying to save the planet from global warming. That scientifically proven fact that you don't believe in because you're actually a rightist pretending to be a leftist. Now, of course, we would have this problem with the Pantsocks because they do pretend to be socialists when in fact they keep supporting not only right-wing organizations but right-wing viewpoints as well. And Since when is wanting more food to be produced during a global food crisis a right-wing position? If that's a right-wing position, there is something really, really wrong. When Mao came to power in China, did he reduce the amount of food China had? No. When Stalin came to power in Russia, did he reduce the amount of food Russia had? No. In fact, you look at what the socialist countries of the world do. They push growth. They raise countries out of poverty with five-year economic plans, socialist construction, stakhanovism. They build these countries up. So if you think that wanting more food to be produced, not less, is somehow a right-wing position, oh boy, we got a problem here, Jason. I mean, if if left-wing means making people poorer because global warming, uh, we got a problem. Problem for them, the less said about Alexander Dugan, the better. So, Dugan doesn't believe in historical progress. Dugan believes the past, present, and future are equal. Um, you know, so Dugan doesn't fit in with this at all. I, I don't think Dugan talks about degrowth. Uh, he doesn't talk about Malthusianism. That has nothing to do with Alexander Dugan. Have you ever read anything that Alexander Dugan ever wrote, Jason? Are you just like throwing his name in there because he's this big, scary Russian guy with a beard like you? I mean, do you know anything about Dugan? Dugan does not talk about this issue at all, as far as I can tell. Dugan is a conservative. He's a traditionalist in Russia. Like Dugan is not on top of this stuff. I have not seen a statement from Dugan on the Dutch farmers. Dugan generally does not believe in historical progress. He's into postmodernism. And so Dugan has absolutely nothing to do with this, except that everyone who doesn't agree with the CNN position is a Nazi. I mean, that's basically what they think, right? They can't tell the difference between Dugan and LaRouche and me and Haas and, you know, you know, uh, you know, Venezuela and Cuba. It's like anyone who doesn't go along with the CNN narrative, we're all the same. We're all, and, and being a leftist just means you agree with CNN. CNN hates the Dutch farmers. So does Jason. Continue. What do we have? We have Caleb Maupin and the rest of the usual suspects saying that this is an attempt to, this is for degrowth. This is this degrowth. They're trying to be the Malthusian. Yes, actually. They are trying to impose policies on the Dutch farmers that will reduce their crop output. And they will have less. They will produce less food. That is degrowth, Jason. That is degrowth. To which now, I'm, this is starting to get to the point where I'm going to have to ask, are these Malthusians in the room with us right now? Are these degrowth people in the room with us right now? That's such a poor delivery of that joke. It's really a poor delivery of that joke, right? But continue. Because this whole degrowth thing seems to be something wholly manufactured by you. I'm sure you have found tweets from a couple nut jobs in a very few small 
nearly insignificant sources, and you think it's this global worldwide conspiracy by the internet. A few nut jobs. Didn't didn't Richard Wolf just make a video promoting degrowth? I think he did. Uh, let, let's pull up some uh, some 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 interesting things. Just a few isolated nut jobs, right? No one's talking about degrowth, right? It's all just all just what is this book that is widely available? This is one of the main socialist books you can find at American bookstores. What is this book? What is it called here? We got the future is degrowth: a guide to a world beyond capitalism. That is one of the main socialist books being sold right now, equating critique of capitalism with degrowth. Oh, but but what else? What else? Right? What else we got here? Um, what is what else? What other popular uh, leftist titles might be promoting this? What else do we got there? Oh, we've got um, what else? We got less is more. How to say how degrowth will save the world by Jason Hickel, uh, and. It's endorsed by what group there? Extinction Rebellion, one of the main left-wing groups that's going around protesting global warming, is a degrowth organization. Uh, wow, wow, you know, but it's all in our heads, right? You know, degrowth isn't a thing, Caleb. You just made up degrowth. It's like he didn't even deliver that joke very effectively. Degrowth is really being pushed hard in leftist circles right now, right? It's really, really, really being pushed hard. Michael Moore pushed it in his Planet of the Humans documentary. Um, you know, I, I'm sorry, degrowth is everywhere in left-wing circles, but I guess I just made it all up, right? I just made it all up. National bankers. But trust me, there really is no such thing. Actually, is BlackRock an international bank? And did they push degrowth policies? Going on, in fact, we keep going forward and driving this entire planet towards its inevitable destruction. Well, the fact, Jason, that you you are just confirming exactly what I'm saying, right? Did you see what he just did there? He said, nobody believes in degrowth. It's obscure. And actually, we just keep going forward. And that's bad. Well, if 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 you think growth is bad, Jason, you're promoting degrowth. The idea that growth is bad, that somehow human beings should have less. That's called degrowth, Jason. That's what you're promoting. But continue. So the protests have certainly started to get out of hand. A teenager was shot after he was driving a tractor towards the police. Now, of course, ACAB, but if you drive a tractor at the police, you know what's going to happen. And if you're willing to make that sacrifice, then that's totally up to you. But <laughs> no comment. That just, that just doesn't deserve a comment. I mean, Mr. Leather Jacket there with his Antifa flag. That part, it just no comment, Jason. No comment. ...create very obvious consequences. Oh, they do, Jason. Especially do. when you're doing it in favor of the rich. And so you know, against another faction of the rich that's way more powerful that wants to drive down the world food supply and make everyone a lot poorer because they think growth is bad because they want to stay at the top of the planet and there's already a food crisis going on and millions of people in the third world are going to die. But continue, Jason, continue. So forth. Now, if this really was about degrowth and all that, why are these pan socks not up in arms now about China? Well, how about the fact that China has a war on deserts and they're creating more farmland than ever? How about the fact that China has lifted millions and millions of people out of poverty? You know, China is doing the opposite of degrowth. Uh, they've eradicated extreme poverty. They're waging war on deserts and creating farmland. They're advancing fusion energy, which could get us out of the nightmare of fossil fuels, which all these people that claim they're so worried about global warming and carbon emissions, I never see them supporting fusion energy. Just saying, right? It's always, you know, global warming just means everyone has to be poorer. Never see them promoting, never see them promoting China's work around fusion energy. But continue. China has decided to take tons of farmland and return it to nature. Actually, they're doing the opposite. They've taken tons of deserts and made them arable land. They've increased their crop outputs hugely, vast expansion in their food production apparatus. You know, there was, you know, there was hunger every day, you know, malnutrition all the time before the revolution. Millions of Chinese people have been lifted out of poverty. 
look at what China is doing right now, not just not just in China, but around the world, building infrastructure. That's not degrowth, my friend. That is not what degrowth looks like. Uh, you think that that farmers in the European countries being told they have to produce less is not degrowth, but somehow China lifting millions and millions of people out of poverty and building infrastructure all over the world and eradicating deserts and making them into, you know, arable land. Somehow that is degrowth. You're, you're, you're just completely losing me now, Jason. So they're deliberately destroying farmland. And because we know that material reality is now infinite, according to Moppin, why are they not up in arms about the Chinese degrowth policy that's now being put through that they are so adamantly against? Because it's not degrowth, because they're raising people up out of poverty, because they're doing the opposite of degrowth, building infrastructure, you know, because that's not what China's doing. Um, I'm sorry. It's like, I mean, you, you, you look at Dutch farmers being told to put out less food and that's not degrowth, but somehow, somehow, China raising millions of people out of poverty and constructing around the world is degrowth. I, I'm just, I'm lost, Jason. Where is it? Why aren't they up in arms about this and instead coming to the aid of rich landlords? Very much like what they did with the trucker convoy in Canada. These, the so-called freedom convoy being led by a guy who said that the numbers of dead in the Holocaust were exaggerated, that Caleb didn't know about because he didn't research the guy who was leading the protest, which very much tells you that he's either a liar or he's incompetent. Or maybe my whole criticism was that leftists should have been leading the protest, Jason. But maybe when working people are angry at the government and are trying to assert their rights, uh, Maybe that's when communists should be leading them and not just defending the status quo. Maybe that's what I said. Did that ever occur to you? Did it ever occur to you that, you know, that our job isn't simply to defend the liberal order from conservative opposition? Did it ever occur to you that, that the reason that these people that are angry at the status quo are rallying around the right wing is because leftists like you have dropped the ball and just become shills of the establishment? But continue, please. So... I think it's really important to understand not only just exactly who these farmers are, what they represent, what they're doing, and what they're about, but to also understand the context in which it appears. Like, you mean a global food crisis that we're on the brink of, where people all over Africa and Latin America and other parts of the world are not going to have food because of U.S. imperialism and because of their degrowth organic policies they forced on countries like Sri Lanka and because of the war that they fomented, the NATO conflict they fomented in Ukraine, there's going to be shortages of food and the context, that's what the context of this, this is, Jason. That's what the context is. Um, yeah. Efforts to not destroy the planet by switching to another kind of fertilizer and having regulations is not and drive down the food supply at a time we're already having food shortages. It's a little bit of a concern, isn't it? I mean, isn't Jason supposed to be a third worldist? What kind of third worldist wants to starve people in the third world? Because that's what a bunch of wealthy, white environmentalists want to do. What kind of third worldist? wants crop output to go down because that's what BlackRock and Bill and Melinda Gates want to do. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I mean, this guy's supposed to be a third worldist, right? We're all evil, first world privileged people, but he doesn't seem interested in actually helping, helping people in the third world. I think he, he wants to starve them. He wants to starve the third world in order to please a bunch of wealthy people in the first world because it's trendy among hip liberals in the first world. Same thing as lining people up and having to shoot them. Yes, actually depriving people of food, Jason, is the same thing. You know, if you kill people by mass starvation, if you impose policies that reduce global food output, 
Um, that is like lining people up and shooting them. That's that's basically what it is, you know, creating a food crisis and using the food crisis as an opportunity to push these organic policies that reduce crop output, as Samantha Power indicated they want to do. Uh, that is killing people. That is that is what it is, Jason. You are going to kill people in the third world because the Dutch farmers are racist. That's not Malthusianism. That's just trying to save the planet. Y yeah. Driving down the population and saying the problem the problem is is there's too many people in the world and trying to reduce the amount of food that's put out there and trying to drive down living standards in order to stabilize the economy. The belief that the problem isn't the irrational capitalist system that's holding back growth. The problem is somehow just that there's too many people in the world. Who invented the word overpopulation, Jason? Who invented that word? Who invented the word? Malthus. Malthusian is when you softly deny the existence of COVID. I don't deny the existence of COVID. I've had COVID, my friend. I've had COVID. I don't deny the existence of it. Restrictions oppose vaccines on it, leading... I don't oppose vaccines. I'm vaccinated, Jason. So I, I don't oppose vaccines. I'm vaccinated. Public, particularly the, the elderly, the already immunocompromised, so that the convenience of most and the profits of the elite can flow. That is Malthusian. Uh, Jason, what country had the highest COVID deaths? What country had the highest COVID deaths? It must have been China, right? Their evil communist policies killed everybody. Must have been Russia, right? Must have been Cuba. Must have been Vietnam. Oh, wait. The highest COVID deaths. What country had the highest COVID deaths? Let's find out. What country had the highest COVID deaths? What country had the highest COVID deaths? According to BBC, an article published on the 12th of May, it was the United States that had the highest COVID deaths. U.S. deaths were above global average. According to all the data I'm seeing, the United States had the highest COVID death rate. So if you're telling me, if you're telling me that by criticizing U.S. policies around COVID, I'm killing people, I've got a feeling that you're a little bit wrong. The U.S. government's policies on COVID have a few problems, I think. Jason needs to Google President Xi's Global Development Initiative. I guess it's degrowth, right? China building high-speed railway and hospitals all over the world is degrowth. This is fun. I love to hate people like this. So there we go. Just wanted to bring Jason on there. That's that's what my critics are saying now. That's a little bit fun. That's fun stuff, isn't it? Isn't that entertaining? That's fun stuff. Jason, Jason Unruhe, everybody. The Dutch farmers, the Dutch farmers are bad because they want to put out more food. And restricting the amount of food that goes out is not degrowth, but China building hospitals and schools all over the world is degrowth. And if you criticize U.S. government policies, that makes you Malthusian, even though U.S. government policies led to more COVID deaths than anywhere else. That, folks, is the great Jason Unruhe. We love you, Jason. Thank you for that great debate. Awesome stuff. All right.